Hello, I'm Karen Hendricks with Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, and we have the honor today, the treat, to talk with one of Gettysburg's most talented residents, multiple times New York, New York Times best-selling author, Jeff Shara. What an honor. Thank you well, so much. Thank you. Well, welcome to my home. Yes, I, I want to thank you because we are sitting on the front porch of your beautifully restored Gettysburg home. And I understand you recently won a preservation award from historic Gettysburg Adams County. Yes. So yes. it sounds like you approach this project like you approach your books with meticulous research and a, a great deal of care. So why don't we start with talking about your home a little bit, if that's okay. Tell us a little bit about the the, this beautiful project. Yeah, this house, first of all, the house dates to 1900. It was built by a Union General, Charles Collis, who built this home uh, as his summer home. Uh, he lived in New York City. And um, he, he put in all the features and, and I mean, he, he spared no expense. Well, over the years, it deteriorated pretty significantly. I and mean, the house was a wreck when, when we came along. Um, and we spent a lot of time, uh, spent a lot of money um, and cleaning it up, getting the, this stuff. We had dumpsters that, the, to haul the stuff out of the house. We had eight dumpsters that, eight. We, we, that we filled up. Um, but then once it was cleaned out and we had our contractor, Sean Smith, Night Builders, who's done wonderful work for us, and he came in here and it took a year. And we restored, we restored the floors. Uh, the windows are new because they had to be. They were rotten, the yeah. windows that were here. Uh, the siding is new, the roof is new. Uh, but the interior, the wood interior is all original to the house. We tried to keep as much original as possible. Um, as not just respect for General Collis, but respect for us. I mean, just to have a, a house that, that has that flavor of a 1900 home mm -hmm. um, and with, without all the modern things. Mm -hmm. Well, in the current issue of Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, the September-October issue, there's a meticulously researched article by my fellow writer, Lisa Gregory, and it's about the upcoming 30th anniversary of the movie Gettysburg based upon the novel, The Killer Angels, written by your father, Michael Shera. Mm -hmm. Tell me what this 30th anniversary means to you. Well, first of all, the fact that the movie, 30 years later, is just as popular as when it came out mm -hmm. is a testament to the quality of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but it all begins with a book. You know, there would be no movie, there would be no, none of these actors, I mean, nobody would be doing anything about this if it were not for my father's book. Mm -hmm. And that's remarkable. And The Killer Angels, as of next year, 2024, is 50 years old. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, the, people don't realize it's been that long. 1974 is when mm -hmm. the book came out. Won the Pulitzer Prize in 75. My father had yes. no idea mm -hmm. what he left behind. And the bittersweet part of this is the fact that, yes, the movie is 30 years old. It's a huge celebration around that, deservedly so, none of which my father lived to see. He never lived, he never saw the film. Uh, the film came out two years, or uh, I'm sorry, five years after his death. He died in 1988. The film right. came out in 93. He didn't live to see it. He had no idea. He, he worked on it. He wanted to get his book on the screen and died not having any idea that it would, not only would it happen, but it would happen to this extent that it would be such a popular film. So it's, it's an honor to my father. I mean, this is, uh, you know, paying respects to him for creating the vessel that, that would produce this film in the first place is a pretty amazing thing for me. Yeah, you talk about it being bittersweet and your father didn't get to see all of this come to fruition. Not only that, he didn't get to the privilege of knowing that you would kind of pick up that mantle and continue on that you would even become a writer of this caliber. So I guess talk to me a little bit about your father and what he would say if he were here today. Well, my father was very competitive. <laughs> so I'm, I'm always curious about what, and I'll, and I'll just say very briefly that the reason I'm a writer is because my father was gone. 
it, it fell to me, Ted Turner's people, Ron Maxwell contacted me and said, we want to make more movies, wouldn't it be great to take your father's story, which is just Gettysburg, go before and after and create more stories with a lot of the same characters, because Ted Turner wanted to make movies. Mm -hmm. And I had never written anything before, but I thought it was something I'd like to try to do, and the result of the, my first effort was Gods and Generals, my first book, um, which was a hit, and I mean, nobody was more amazed by that than I was. That right there would be an interesting comparison to my father because my father never had a hit. Mm -hmm. Even when the Killer Angels won the Pulitzer Prize in 1975, it was not a bestseller. It did not do well commercially. Um, if you think about the, the mid-1970s, what's going on? It's the end of the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to read a book about generals. Mm -hmm. And so that was a bitter disappointment to him that even with the Pulitzer Prize, it didn't matter. The book wasn't successful. Mm -hmm. So here I come along having no idea what I'm doing, and it sort of falls out of the sky on me. And um, I don't take that for granted, but I don't know what my father would, would make of that. I, I, think, I mean, he spent 40 years of his life as a writer. Mm -hmm. um, he, he wrote 70 short stories, uh, four novels, um, and he didn't live to see his greatest success, uh, and that level of success has sort of fallen out of the sky on, on what I've done, and I mean, that, that's, that's a remarkable thing to me, and I certainly don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Well, I understand your most recent book focuses on Teddy Roosevelt. Your next book, which I understand is coming out in the spring, focuses on the Cuban Missile Crisis. So. What is it about these iconic, important dates in American history, these, these stories of American history uh, that compel you to keep writing? Well, it's, it's about the characters. It's not the, you know, none of my books are event-driven books. They're character-driven. Mm -hmm. Now, the events are pretty significant. I mean, I've done everything from the American Revolution up through the Korean War, um, you know, significant historical events. But it's the people that draw me in, it's, you know, the, the characters. What my father started with the Killer Angels is to tell you the story of the Battle of Gettysburg from four distinct points of view. Mm -hmm. Two on the north, two on the south, and very much on the fence, mm -hmm. and there's no agenda there. Mm -hmm. And so you get the story through four sets of eyes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the lesson I learned, and so I have done that in every book I've done where you, you move through the timeline going back and forth from the different characters, from their points of view. Mm -hmm. The Teddy Roosevelt book was very different um, because it's one point of view. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do so, I wanted to get away from the war stories so much because you can only do so many war stories and they begin to it sort of be the same. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same kind of things happen. Mm -hmm. So I, the Teddy Roosevelt story, I mean, they talk about a character that drew me in. When I started doing the research on this man, he was fun. I mean, there's so much good in his life and so many things he accomplishes and so many adventures and so many things he gave us as, as a country, as a culture and a society. Um, he was a blast to write, and I, I read a lot of fun with that book. The Cuban Missile Crisis book, again, because it's not a war, and, and, mm -hmm. and thank God it's not a war, because none of us would be here to talk about it. Uh, but that time, I lived through that as a little kid. And I remember the, the sheer terror of what the possibilities were that, you know, the Russians and the United States could go to nuclear war and basically wipe out the planet and how close it came. And a lot of people, even at the time, a lot of people didn't realize how close it came. Mm -hmm. And so to tell this story from the point of view of, of Kennedy, of Khrushchev, and then of a, of a family in Tallahassee, Florida, um, which I, I don't mind saying it's my family, mm -hmm. you know, what that was like uh, watching the evening news, you know, watching Walter Cronkite talk about what's happening uh, and seeing it. Um, so that's a little bit of a, of a departure for me as well. But again, it's about the people. It's about the characters. It's almost like you took your father's first work, wasn't his first work, mm -hmm. but it's almost like you took that novel, The Killer Angels, and really turned it into a master class by your father on how to focus on these iconic characters. As you say, it's all character driven. 
Um, do you feel the influence of your father even still today in your writing? Oh, sure. I mean, what you just described, the master class, is a good way of putting it. And what I've always described it as my father invented that. My father invented yeah. the format right. that he uses in The Killer Angels. And I've just taken that format and run with it in my own career. Yeah. Um, and I, it, it, it's worked. I mean, it's, it's a good thing. And, uh, and he has no idea, you know. So it's. Right. Um, but it's something, again, as I said before, it's something I take seriously. Yeah, yeah. Well, I knew that these 10 minutes were just going to fly by. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I want to ask you so much more, but let's return to our final question to this idea of home, because we started mm -hmm. talking about your home here in Gettysburg, and I want to ask you, you know, you've lived all over the world, all over the United mm -hmm. States, as you referenced, you grew up up grew up in Florida, you've lived in New York, but here you are in Gettysburg, mm -hmm. a very small town compared to many of the others. Um, what is it about Gettysburg and I imagine it feels like home, so why does it feel like home to you? Well, first of all, I mean, I came to Gettysburg, I mean, I had been coming to Gettysburg for years, doing events, doing book signings, doing you know, interviews, doing all kinds of things, uh, certain events here. Uh, since the early 90s and then with the film and everything else um, but I got to know a woman here very well over the years and about see we've been married now nine years mm -hmm. and so the reason for actually moving here mm -hmm. was her mm -hmm. um, to make a home here and when we have I mean th this is our home and so you know that's that's the easy part of it but then of course being here um, you begin to appreciate all everything that's here we live on the battlefield. I mean, right, you know, off, off camera here, but right over there, there are cannons in the front yard. Yes. Um, and, and people drive by here all the time on their way to the Virginia Monument because it's the only way to get there is to drive right by my house. Um, so the, the whole idea of being a part of this community and being a part of the battlefield, um, it's really special. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I, I enjoy it I, a great deal. Yeah. yeah. You were telling me earlier before we started recording that people sometimes even stop or drive by and <laughs> love the books and, and that kind of thing, um, uh, which as a writer myself, uh, that's wonderful that people um, are appreciating your, your, your books. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it ever get, um, you know, um, I don't know if annoying is the right word, but uh, you're, you're kind of in a fishbowl here too. Well, it's fine. I mean, again, people mean well, and, yeah. and they have, they're complimentary, and they're kind, yeah. and I try to return that. Yeah. Um, my fear is, and I've said this before, the house resembles a bed and breakfast. There are people who have stopped and said, is this a bed and breakfast? Can I make a reservation? And we've had to explain that, no, no, you know, it was at one time, but no, it's, it's our home. And my fear is that one day I'm going to come downstairs and there's going to be some guy standing in the living room <laughs> wanting to know if he can stay here. And uh, so I, that hasn't happened yet, but uh, I, I tend to want to keep the door locked a little more. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for sharing a bit of your time and your home with us today. I so appreciate you sharing all your insights, adding more depth. Uh, to the article that's in the current issue of Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine. Thank Great. you so much, Jeff Scherer, for your time today. Well, thank you. For Celebrate Gettysburg Magazine, I'm Karen Hendricks.